Hey kids, today we're going to look at what we'll call a yellow, no, what we will call, what we will call 6.1a. We're going to look at trig identities, alright, we're going to look at the basic identities, we're going to look at Pythagorean identities, and if we have time we'll look at some other identities too. Doesn't that sound like a blast? What is a trig identity? Have you asked? A trig identity is a value which is true for all values for which the expression is defined. The identity will help us evaluate things, it'll help us simplify things, it'll help us change from like sine to cosine if we need to, or tangent if we need to. It'll help us take what we know and figure out what we need to know. It'll help us prove things. I know the dreaded P word, prove. Now there are some trig identities in which we all scots to know. Okay. Look at these beasts. Some of these you might already know. Should already know. You might already know. Like tan is sine over cosine. Y over X if you look at the unit circle. Cotan, that is X over Y. The opposite or the reciprocal of tan. Sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant and cosine go together. Cotan and tan go together. Tan and cotan go together. All right. We, we've seen these before, but now we're going to actually use them. All right. I'll be honest with you. These. I need my other software bag. These are used much more than these. And most time when you're dealing with tan or cotan, you're using these, not these ones. All right? So keep that in the back of your noggin. And let's do a bunch of examples. Sound good to y'all out there in the world today? I don't like Internet Explorer. They can sue me if they see this video. I don't care. All right, cool. So, we know secant is negative root 30 over 3. What's cosine? Now, some of you might be saying, we know cosine is reciprocal of secant. So, right away, I'm going to say this is negative 3 over root 30. Sorry, I've glitched in the matrix. I don't know where that ended. All right. Some of you might be saying, well, I know cosine of theta equals 1 over secant of theta. And now we can plug in that we know what secant of theta is, right? So I can plug that in wherever I see that secant. Do 1 over negative root 30 over 3. And remember, if you're dividing by a fraction, you're multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So you still get negative 3 over root 30. Which, uh, we got to rationalize this beast. So I multiply my top and bottom by square root of 30 to get rid of the square root on the bottom. And root 30 times root 30 is 30. This just is negative 3 root 30. One more reduction. How many times does 3 go into 30? One. So it's just negative root 30 over 10 is the final answer. All right. Fractions. Who knew? I guess all your math teachers have been telling you to learn fractions for so long. All right. Let's take a look at this beast. We know tan of x equals root 2 over 4. And we know what cosine of x is. We want to find sine of x. All right, well, I'm going to start with tan. What do we know about tan? Well, tan of x equals sine over cosine, correct? Yeah, 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 it does. All right, oh, sorry about that. I don't have a very big desk right now. So I'm going to plug in then what I know. Well, 
I know tan is root 2 over 4. I know cosine is negative 2 root 2 over 3. Right. Right. Right, right, right. And I don't know what sine is. That's what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to treat that whole top piece like a variable. I eat. All right. Now it's time to solve it. So I'm going to cross multiply my fractions. You guys remember doing that? So I get 4 times sine of x, more fractions, equals root 2 times negative 2 root 2 over 3. Okay? Now what's square root of 2 times square root of 2? Everybody all at once. Yeah, it's 2. Negative 2 times 2 over 3 equals 4 sine of x. Uh-oh, I'm going to run out of room here. This is what happens when you're crazy. You're a mad person. You're just writing all over the place. So this becomes negative 4 over 3. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, right? So those cancel. And what's negative 4 thirds divided by 4? Remember, times by reciprocal. Get rid of that 4. And I get 4's cancel, negative 1 third. So sine of x equals negative 1 third. I don't have to use inverse or anything. I'm just treating sine of x like a variable. I'm going to pause for time. Maybe pause for time. All right, we're going to keep scrolling here, guys. we got so much to do. Let's take a look at number three. All right, so now we have cosecant and cotan, and we want to find secant. All right, so I'm going to look at my formula sheet. I'm going to look for one that has secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Well, if I look up there, I see cotangent equals. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, this one's wild. Cotangent equals cosine over sine, right? That doesn't really help me yet. Sorry, I'm not putting the letters in, but you guys will be fine. Ah, is there a way I can quickly change cosecant into sine? Yeah, cosecant and sine are reciprocals. So if cosecant is 7 thirds, sine is 3 sevenths. All right. So now let's see if I can solve this, find cosine, and then use cosine to find out what my secant is. I know, right? I can already hear you guys complaining. All right. So cotan is negative 2 root 10 over 3. Yar or nar? Yar. Cosine is what I'm trying to solve for. Cosine of beta. Well, technically, I'm trying to find secant, but in order to get secant, I need cosine. And sine is 3 sevenths. Now, this is some good old-fashioned algebra to solve for that b, or for that cosine b, I should say. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 7 thirds. No, I'm not. I'm going to times both sides by 3 sevenths. Because then these will cancel. Remember, if you multiply by whatever's down below, it um, gets rid of it. So then over here, I'm going to get 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 root 10 over 7 times 3 is 21 equals cosine of b. That quick. We already got there. But hold the phone, you phonies. I'm going to reduce this real quick. Both these are divisible by 3. Okay? So that becomes negative 2 root 10 over 7, right? I'm just making our life easier here as we go. 
So, if cosine of b equals negative 2 root 10 over 7, then secant is the reciprocal of that. So I flip it. So I do 7 over negative 2 root 10. Now hold on now. i got to rationalize that denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by root 10 to get rid of that square root on the bottom. 7 times root 10 is 7 root 10 over, I'm going to write on this, root 10 times root 10 is 10, and 2 times 10 is 20. Still negative. That's a 20. So that's my secant. Ay caramba. Fun stuff, guys. Fun, fun stuff. Fun stuff right there. All right, let's talk about Pythagorean identities. And then I might save the last identity to do in class. Okay? So Pythagorean identities. Remember good old a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Well, since we're dealing with the unit circle, the unit circle, the radius, the, the, the longest side of every triangle is 1. So a squared plus b squared equals 1. Because um, sine is your x, cosine is your y. X squared plus y squared would be 1 squared, your hypotenuse. So now let's find, let's use these. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. Cotan squared plus 1 is cosecant squared. You're going to get real familiar with these. You're going to use them quite a bit. Okay? All right, given you're looking for cosine and tangent, and you know sine is negative 1 third. And we know cotangent is negative. What's that have to do with anything? Well, if you look at your unit circle, do you remember this was plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, like your xy coordinates? And also recall that sine is your x. So sine is negative. So we know we're either looking at this quadrant or this quadrant, right? Cosine, sine. Oh, I'm sorry. Sine is your y. So you're either looking at this quadrant or this quadrant, right? Now, cotangent is negative. And cotangent is sine over cosine. So I need a positive and a negative. So it's either one of these two. So because these are both positive and negative, and my sine is negative, I know we're in this quadrant. Quadrant 4. Now, why does that matter? Because this tells me that I know cosine is going to be positive here. I have to have a positive, a positive cosine. By digress, let's get into the negative. So I'm going to do cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 to find cosine. Sine is, is negative 1 third. So I'm going to plug it in and solve. So cosine squared plus negative one third squared equals one. So cosine squared plus one ninth equals one. So cosine squared equals eight ninths. I subtracted one ninth from both sides. And then I square both sides to get cosine. Square root, I should say. So I square root my top and my bottom. So I get square root of 8 over square root of 9 is 3. And this actually reduces down to 2 root 2 over 3. Okay? Wowie, wow, wow, wowie. So I found cosine. We did it. Now we got to find tan. Well, tan equals sine over cosine. And we know that has to be positive. You do have to check for negatives because we're in quadrant four. So let's find tan. Tan is sine over cosine. Well, my sine is negative one third. My cosine is two root two over three. So I'm dividing two fractions, so I multiply by the reciprocal. 
is what I'm actually doing. My threes cancel. I get negative one over two root two. Okay? Which, if we rationalize the denominator, we get negative root two over four because we times it by root two over two. And I know it's negative because I have positive negative. Tan has to be negative. Oh, oopsie. All right, guys, last problem on the video. Last problem on the video. I want to find tan and sine, and I know secant. All right, so I'm going to look up above at my Pythagorean theorem identities and see if there's any that deal with secant and tan or secant and sine or secant whatever. And when I look up there, I see that tan squared equals, or tan squared plus 1, equals secant squared. All right, I can work with this. Oh, and now here I know sine is greater than zero. And I know cosine is positive because if secant is positive, cosine is positive. So these are both positive. And which, po which quadrant is the positive positive? First quadrant up here. So that means if I'm in the first quadrant, everything is positive there. Ask me if I'm sure. I'm positive. Oh, well, good talk. All right. So I'm going to plug in what I know. I don't know tan squared, but I know secant squared or secant is 6 or 5. Okay. So that means tan squared plus 1 equals 36 over 25. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I get tan squared equals 11 over 25. I found a common denominator, guys. 1 is the same thing as 25 over 25. Now, how do I get rid of a square? Square root it. So I get tan of x equals root 11 over 5. All right? Because square root, square root goes to the top and the bottom when you have a fraction. Now I know tan, and I know secant. So let's go. I can do this one of two ways. I can either do it where tan of x I'll actually show you the way I... Let's do it with the Pythagorean identities. If I know secant, I know cosine. If secant is 6 fifths, cosine is 5 6. Okay? So what I would do is I would set up tan of x or tan equals sine over cosine, right? I know tan is root 11 over 5. I'm looking for sine of x, and I know cosine is 5, 6. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, 6 to get rid of my denominator. When I do that, my 5's cancel, these cancel, and I get sine of x is root 11 over 6. 11 over 6. All right. Do I expect you to be an expert on this right now, this very second? No. No, 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 no. Do I expect you to have some understanding? Yeah, why not? Sorry for a 20-minute video, guys. I hope you learned something. Uh, Reva Dirty.